It's a high-stakes chess match for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world, a game Lennox Lewis has been playing for nearly two years. It began with a second-round knockout of Razor Rush, Halloween 92. The victory supposedly guaranteed Lewis a meeting with the winner of the title bout between Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowe. Never could Lewis have anticipated the move that would follow. After Bo beat Holyfield and became the undisputed champion, rather than to honor the agreement to fight Lewis, Bo chose to throw away the WBC belt. That move not only gave Lewis the WBC title, but gave Bo the opportunity to maneuver away from Lennox. Dokes virtually out on his feet. And the left hook lands and Ferguson goes down. As Bo avoided him, Lewis fought on. Finally, on November 6, Lewis found himself in position to unify the title, when Holyfield defeated Bo to reclaim two heavyweight belts. But in this game, you can never predict your opponent's next move, particularly when it's controlled by a governing body, who threatened to strip Holyfield of his titles unless he fought the number one contender, Michael Moore. When Holyfield lost, Lewis again found himself without a move. There still looms a fight with Bo and later Michael Moore. But before this match can come to an end, Lewis must defeat tonight's opponent, the WBC's new number one contender, Oliver McCall. Enough with the games, mate. You're messing with the Grand Master. his title against the number one ranked contender, American Oliver McCall, here in London at one o'clock in the morning in the Wembley Arena before a smaller than hoped for crowd of about 4,000 people. Lennox Lewis prepares to defend the championship he was given by the WBC two years ago against an American who has surprisingly made his way to the forefront of the heavyweight rankings, the heretofore little known Oliver McCall. didn't make the World Cup Finals and who hasn't had a Wimbledon Men's Singles Champion in over 50 years. To have the World Heavyweight Boxing Champion is unprecedented. Lennox Lewis is the first man to achieve that for Great Britain in over 100 years. So really we should put him on a pedestal and honour him. But we don't. The jury is out on Lennox Lewis. People close to the sport of boxing and the man and woman on the street are definitely divided in their opinion of him. An Olympic gold medal for Canada, a World Heavyweight title for Great Britain. Is it a question of patriotism, of where you were born, or is it purely a question of money? To put it mildly, he's an opportunist. He turned professional, and he looked around. There was nothing that could be done for him at Canada. They hardly run any professional shows there. He would be considered a foreigner in America, trying to make his way. So he decided to become an Englishman, which was his, apparently his original birthright. And he came here and decided to cash in on being an Englishman. You could forgive a rival promoter for being jealous. There's a lot of money to be made from a heavyweight champion. So what does Lennox say about the transformation? I could have uh, fought in, in America, but I think this is something that I wanted to do because of the fact I grew up in East London and from England, and it was just the best route for me to take. 
When Lewis fought Bruno, the British public were split in who to support. Many got behind the true Brit, Bruno. And even though Lewis won, doubts still exist about the champion. It depends which people doubt it. If it's other people in boxing, that's only a pure jealousy factor. Um, the average guy out on the street recognised Lennox Lewis for what he is. An English guy that's the first, become world heavyweight champion, the first one in a hundred years, and probably the only one. So is Frank Maloney right? Are the public 100% behind their champion? This is Berwick Street, a market in the heart of London, and a good place to ask the British public what they think. He's not really been brought up in this country, and uh, he's a Canadian. <laughs> he was born and bred in this country, so I think he's entitled to fight this country. It's difficult to describe him as British as he spent so much time abroad. Uh, in Canada. I think he's made his decision, he wants to be over here and he fights for England. Lennox Lewis just, in my eyes, he's just going where the money's going. And he ain't doing nothing for England at all. He comes from West Ham, East End boy. If you're born, if you're born somewhere, that's where you are, that's where you come from. I think he's fighting under a flag of convenience. This quote incensed many when it was printed in Esquire magazine. And remember too that he was in Jamaica, not England, when he was officially announced WBC champion. In reply to the question, why aren't you here, he said, Ain't I entitled one little holiday? Now you must remember that people in the public eye will forever be criticised, and Lewis is no exception. But he doesn't spend enough of his leisure time in these shores, and it doesn't go unnoticed. Lewis doesn't work hard. I don't think at promoting his image. I know he's had criticism from the likes of Don King that Lewis uh, doesn't attend press conferences, doesn't feature. He certainly initially worked very hard in England to try and win over the British public when he was climbing the steps. But now he's got there, all of a sudden it's a different kettle of fish. We don't see him over here. Well, there you have it. Just how patriotic is Lennox Lewis. I think the quote, I like England, I love Canada, sums a lot of it up. Canada is where he was raised, England is where he does his business. But for me, I'm proud of what he's done for this country. In my eyes, Lennox Lewis is as British as the Houses of Parliament, the Tower Bridge, the changing of the guard, and you can't get any more English than the epitome of Englishness itself, James Bond. I'll let you think about that one for a while. Clever enough, Gary, the subtle reference there. If Irishman Pierce Brosnan lives at the doorstep of Hollywood, he does so because that's where the money is. And Larry, if Lennox Lewis fights in the name of commerce, he isn't the first fighter to do it. Not at all. In fact, Tommy Burt, the last British heavyweight champion back at the start of the century, uh, fled England early in his life. And when he came here, he had a fight here and he stood at the turnstile. He, he demanded that there should be one turnstile counted everybody who came in, insisted on getting paid before he went to, to fight. So this has been going on for a long time. <laughs> it's the sad fact of Lewis's appeal here that if he had wanted to count every spectator here tonight, he might have had time to do it himself. Tale of the tape between these two fighters, and you'll see that they are both 29 years old. The champion enjoys three inches in height, six and three quarter pounds in weight, and eight inches in reach advantage. Punch that numbers, Larry. Here's a look at how active the fighters are and how accurate they are, and the numbers speak for themselves. They both throw about the same amount of punches per round. Lewis is the more accurate puncher. And the jabs tell the story. Lewis throws far many more jabs, lands far many more jabs to set up his big right hand. Harold Letterman, the rules, please. <laughs> Lennox Lewis and Oliver McCall will box tonight using the rules of the World Boxing Council. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. You can be saved by the bell in the last round only. Only the referee can stop the fight, and in case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards after three rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. beginning stage dreadlock hairdo is a a new accessory for him 
It portrays an introductory interest in Rastafarian lifestyle and culture, which he says he's going to be pursuing as time goes on. Record for Lennox Lewis, 25 wins, no losses, 21 wins by knockout, including two of the three title defenses. Jim, it looks to me that Oliver McCall is so emotional that he's crying. I had the exact same feeling. He's trying to screw, either he's trying to screw up his courage or trying to make himself feel that he's in something big that he has to do, but I, I think he's wasting energy here. That's, that's exactly you, what I said. As you observe McCall, we go up to ring announcer Mike Goodall for the pre fight introductions. Exclusively live on the wire TV throughout Great Britain and HBO throughout the United States, this is the main event of the evening from Britain's most famous sporting complex of Wembley, which tonight hosts the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. This championship contest has been sanctioned and is being conducted under the jurisdiction of the World Boxing Council, represented at ringside by their supervisor for the contest, Mr. Huchin Hauichi from Tunisia. The officials appointed for this contest are the doctors at ringside, Dr. Stephen Shapiro and Dr. Mohammed, the British Boxing Board steward in charge, Mr. John Clifford, the timekeeper, Mr. Tom Rice of London. The judges at ringside, Mr. Kim J. Bong of Korea, Pino Ferreri of Italy, Franz Marti of Switzerland, and the referee in charge of the action, in charge of his 12th World Championship title, Mr. Jose Guadalupe Garcia of Mexico City. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, Frank Maloney for Panics Promotions and the main events in association with Budweiser, the King of Beers and the Sunday Express newspaper proudly present a contest of 12 three-minute rounds to decide the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing the boxers in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with gold waistband, fighting from Chicago, Illinois, and representing Don King's Productions, comes the challenger for the title, ranked to number one by the WBC, the WBA, and the IBF. He comes to the ring tonight with a professional record of 24 victories, 17 by KO, and has just five losses in his 29 fight career. He weighs 231 and a quarter pounds, 16 stone, seven and a quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Atomic Bull, Oliver McCall. And in the red corner, wearing black trunks with red trim, fighting out of his native East London, he is a former Olympic gold medalist whose professional record is undefeated in 25 contests, 21 coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making his fourth defense of the title. He comes to the ring weighing 238 pounds, 17 stone even. He is the former undefeated heavyweight champion of Great Britain, the Commonwealth, and Europe. He is the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the WBC heavyweight championship of the world. Almost as if his head was ready to explode. Well, McCall's I, I, gone to his corner now, has apparently forgotten about McCall, referee's instructions, or doesn't want to participate McCall. in them. Come on here, McCall. 
Come on, here. Still doesn't want to participate in referee's instructions. What a, what a, uh, very, very strange. Well, I've seen a lot of fights. I haven't seen this before. Well, he's never had a big occasion like that, and he understandably is a little bit involved with everything else. And you know, Larry, he was so wound up, and I noticed that uh, Lennox Lewis uh, didn't, didn't seem to me to even break a sweat uh, in the dressing room. So I think the first round is very important. So what do you think? Advantage Lewis? First round is going to be a very important round. First round advantage McCall, despite the fact that he looks like a nervous wreck to me. When you have that nervous energy early, Jim, it, uh, first round could be very important. Last second delay, a towel draped across the ropes just above our announced position here. So after some unusual moments, and they seem to crop up in every heavyweight championship fight, here we go. Lewis standing like a statue, much as he did at the beginning of his flawed defense against Bruno a year ago. Lewis's most ardent supporters want to see him move, jab, and box. Use his extraordinary athletic talent. trying to find the range to punch up at the bigger man. Lewis pawing with the jab as he did through much of the fight against Phil Jackson in May. Hey, hey, hey. I've already seen the hand of uh, Emmanuel Stewart as far as McCall is concerned. I watched films of McCall. I never saw him throw a left hook, but he did try one already in this fight. Emmanuel Stewart has worked with McCall during the past couple of weeks as an assistant trainer and technical advisor, says that his man will show a variety of different styles during the fight tonight and try to confuse Lewis. He thinks Lewis is easily confused. And Lewis is fighting with his feet very wide apart. Lewis tried a right hand to the body, not a lot of conviction behind it. Hasn't yet thrown the sharp jab, which is his best. Mostly just sticking it out there. Hey. It's been a slow start for Lewis, and McCall seems to be waiting for the big man to try to do something. Lewis misses with the right. McCall gets a right hand to the body inside. Good counter by McCall. Another right hand to the body by McCall. Hey. And a little left hook there. The worst thing that Lewis can do is to try to wrestle with the ball. Right hand lands from a call over the top. He misses to the body as Lewis backs away. Now Lewis begins to throw the jab with a little bit more intent. Dropping that left hand, Lewis. All this wrestling can really uh, sap your stamina, though, and that's, uh, again, McCall has been known to have very, very good stamina. If the first round is a prototype, so far it's a good one for Oliver McCall. Lennox Lewis hasn't really established anything in round one. Hey. Two were right hands in the first round, and we've seen them before, Gil. I thought it was by his own fight plan. But perhaps that's also the fight plan of, of uh, Stewart. And you know, uh, Larry, uh, down goes down Lewis. Goes Lewis having hand. caught a short left hand inside. Six, Easy. seven, eight, nine. What is this? The WBC's referee has stopped this fight after a count to nine with Lewis standing in front of him. And we're going to have a riot here. Jose Guadalupe Garcia stopped the fight in the second round. Oliver McCall's going absolutely nuts. The crowd at ringside momentarily stunned. And that's got
got to be one of the strangest stoppages I ever saw. Certainly was. He was up at about the count of five, wobbled a little bit, but then he seemed to be getting himself together. It was for the heavyweight championship of the world. I can't believe what I just saw, but it's a WBC referee from Mexico. Jose Suleiman is the head of the WBC. He's from Mexico. He is Don he King's the best buddy. I think that very likely McCall might have finished Lennox Lewis. I do but too. Lennox Lewis, as the heavyweight champion, earned the right to be knocked out if that was how it was going to happen. I found now out. Look out. Yeah. You, you stopped the contest. All right, let's take another look. You, you say it was a short right hand inside. I called it a left. But let's take a look at the punch that put Lewis down. They're just moving around, sparring. Again, I had mentioned there's that right hand right on the button. <clears throat> Down goes Lewis. Another look. See, Lewis was fighting with that yep. leg so far apart that he had to reach in with the right hand, and he got beat to the punch. He well, his detractors have always said he has bad balance. But that's hardly a devastating punch. He was up by the count of six and certainly appeared capable of continuing in the fight. <laughs> Referee Jose Guadalupe Garcia of Mexico City working his 12th championship fight according to the literature we're given. With Jose Suleiman, the WBC president, seated at ringside, stops the fight after one knockdown in the second round. And with that, well, once again, the best laid plans go awry for Lennox Lewis, but this time he has nobody to blame but himself. Out the window goes the possibility of Lewis versus Bo in March. Oliver McCall earns one third of the heavyweight championship. Right now, let's go to ring announcer Mike Goodall for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, after 31 seconds of round two, the referee has counted out Lennox Lewis, the winner and new WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Oliver McCall! I told you! I told you! I told you! I told you! still in the ring the aftermath is confusion chaos uncertainty as to exactly how this has taken place now we are prohibited here from interviewing either fighter until medical examinations have been conducted by the british boxing authorities medical examiners so momentarily, we hope to get a chance to talk to both Lewis and McCall, and I'm sure that Larry Merchant will work as well toward an opportunity to hear from the referee, Jose Guadalupe Garcia. I've never seen him before. Don't know if you have, Larry, but he's just made a huge impression on the sport. You've been around the fight game as long as anybody who's active right now. You ever seen this referee? Never seen this referee, never. All right. Let's take another look at the round. We're going to look at it via our handheld cameras in real time and get one more look at the sequence of events that led up to the stoppage of the fight. 31 seconds worth of round number two. And you can see Lewis with his legs so wide apart. When he throws that right hand, he has to reach. And here it comes. The beats of the punch reaching in with that right hand. When you get hit, get caught coming in, you really get nailed. And he was nailed. Six, seven, legs are wobbly. Eight, clearly hurt nine. at that point. And perhaps it was the fact that he put his body weight on the referee and leaned on the referee without being able to steady himself into an erect position that convinced the referee he should stop it. Absolutely. He fell right into the referee. As a matter of fact, if the referee stepped aside, I think he would have fell down again. All right. Maybe that was what led the referee to make his decision. Meanwhile, I'm told that Larry is standing by with the new WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Oliver McCall. Larry. You knocked him down. He gets up at the count of six. He was wobbly. He was glazed. He would have gotten knocked out again. But... but Prob oh. Probably, but he would. But we, but you, you saw him. But were you surprised that here in his hometown they stopped it that quickly? No, hey, no. What y'all want me to do? Kill the man? That's right. See, that's what's wrong now. 
it's a uh, it's a strange sport Gil and you see strange things all the time uh, you don't want to leap to too many conclusions too fast but you saw the joy with which Don King embraces his return to a part of the heavyweight championship it's been a few years and he's back he turned from almost oblivion back on top again with the heavyweight champion never count him out let's go to uh, Larry Merchant once again now with Lennox Lewis all right Lennox give us your version of what happened uh, I just got caught with a lucky shot and the referee seemed to help him along really good how, how dazed how hurt how wobbly were you because you looked badly hurt I wasn't badly hurt I was dazed I got to my feet I recovered the referee asked me if I was okay I nodded yeah Oliver McCoy ain't that good he's not that good so don't well, you're not going to convince the people who, watch, who are out there. He did land a right-hand punch. He, he landed a great right-hand punch. Put me to, he put me on the ground. I, I tried to get up too fast. I, I, was, I, I was a little bit wobbly, and all of a sudden, the referee just said, no, that was it. Did you, did you talk to him? Was he able to communicate w with you at all? The referee couldn't even speak English. When you nod your head, that means yes. Incidentally, the British Board of Boxing Control will not allow us to interview referee Jose Guadalupe Garcia, so we won't be able to hear from him, and if in fact what Lewis says, that he doesn't speak English, is true, then it might not have gained us all that much. But meanwhile, we do have a chance to talk to one of the men from Lewis's management team, Frank Maloney, standing by now with Larry. Larry. All right, Frank Maloney, you explain to us, did you protest at all the fact that there was a Mexican referee in this, at this event? We protested strongly. There was a Mexican referee and a Mexican judge to start with. We had the judge removed. And we protested to our board of control that they should have the referee removed. The board said there was nothing they could do. It was the policy of the WBC. We protested to the WBC strongly. Up until the day before the fight, we were still protesting about the Mexican referee. One of the world shockers of recent years in boxing. 31 seconds into the second round, referee Jose Guadalupe Garcia of Mexico working his 12th world championship fight stops the fight and declares Oliver McCall the WBC world heavyweight champion after this knockdown of Lennox Lewis a befuddled Lewis as shocked as were his partisans at ringside.